Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. We have the finest, our Fantasy Trip Legacy Edition today. So this box, I weighed it last night, like I had my kids step on the scale with it and stuff, and it is like over eight pounds worth of stuff in here. This thing is freaking huge. Like it's probably the biggest like RPG box or RPG style game that I've ever picked up. So this was the Kickstarter Legacy Edition. It has loads and loads of extra goodies in it. I believe the Kickstarter went super huge and they just, they really did. They added so much stuff in here. And I love that Steve Jackson, like when they did their Ogre Kickstarter box, they just added so much stuff. You paid the base price and then they just stuffed the box full. So this is the first time that I'm seeing this full thing put together. I've only seen kind of like the box here and there and pieces of this. And I'm super excited to share it with you guys today. I took the wrapping off of it. So as you can see, let me take that out of the way there. Um, I didn't want to make the camera like show the entire thing because like I want detail in here. So sorry if a little bit of the box is cut off here, guys. And of course, make sure to comment as I am answering questions about what's in this, okay? So all I did was take the cellophane off of this and we're gonna open it up today. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So first off, oh, we have cool stuff in the box here. We have the ra random labyrinth drop table in there, which that's nice a nice addition. It's not like a paper. It's actually printed on the cardboard here for you. I'm going to put that aside. Read this first. Okay, so this is discussing what's in the box. And this box is actually on Kickstarter right now, guys. So if you like what you see, you can go get pieces of it or you can get the full box. Oh my gosh. Oh, they have so much stuff in here. All right, let me put that over there. Okay, so these right here, I believe. And so for all of you that don't know, the Fantasy Trip came out in 1977 with the combat game Melee, which we actually have one of these play mats right here for the Melee game. And underneath it, we have it for the Wizard one as well. And that's kind of where this game started from and evolved from. So they started with those in the basic combat for Melee and Wizard, and then they went ahead and added Death Test and Death Test 2 as a dungeon crawl. So I have not gotten to play this RPG myself, but I'm really excited to get in on this. Like, it's I'm afraid it just missed my time, you know? I started playing RPG-style games in the 90s, so I'm familiar with the newer stuff, but not the older stuff. But I'm so excited about how much they crammed into this box, okay? So let's open this up. No, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna read the full thing for everything, guys, <laughs> because they have so much stuff in here, okay? So these little mini boxes that you get right here, they are full boxes. It's not like a super thin paper thing that you like open or anything. The box, it's a little bit thinner than a normal box because I'm assuming that you're going to put it back in here, but it is a standard box, okay? So in these here, they have the death test rules for death test 2 and death test, and then you got the tokens for that there, along with some little baggies for that. What do we got? These tokens are really nice. I really like the art on these guys. All right, I'm going to pull out some of these so you can see the art on them. What else do we have here? Okay. Oh, yeah, the art is really cute on these. It's small but super, super detailed on these tokens, okay? And then what else do we have here? So that one's Death Test. Put that aside. We got some pads here for character creation on that there and they give you about three pads here that's plenty hello thank you for everybody that's just joining us but we got plenty of those and then we got like these little mini ones as well I'm not sure if 
anybody is super familiar with Fantasy Trip, I'm not sure what the difference between these two are. I'm assuming that one is for character creation for you guys, and then one's going to be like stat creation for monsters and stuff, because they're a little bit easier on that. Okay? Yeah, baggies were added. That's always nice. I hate it whenever a game gives you all the stuff, and then they're like, haha, suckers, you guys don't have any bags. I hope you have some at home. <laughs> That's why, like, every gamer stacks up on bags for their stuff, right? <laughs> so is Death Pest a standalone or it needs one of the others? I believe that you need a por you need this portion of the game. You need at least a base game for that. Because Death Pest is going to be solo adventures for it, okay? So the melee and then the wizard here are going to be your standard move sets, I believe. And then... The other portions are going to be more adventures. And then right now they have on Kickstarter the where you can fund more adventures to be created for this, which is awesome. Yeah, a baggie full of baggies. Every gamer has that at their house. And then sometimes some companies give you extra baggies, and you're like, all right, we'll add this to my bag pack. <laughs> All right, I wanted to see if the dice had anything extra on them, but they're a cool red and blue style marble dice here. These are cute, but they don't have any sort of special little things on them, but they are marbled. You can't really pick up the marbling on there very well, but they're really pretty. Let's see here. We have some cards with treasures and stuff. I like the fact that this is kind of like an RPG where you don't have to really read a whole bunch of books and everything with it. They have a lot of standard figures in it and cards and stuff that you can use to kind of get your game started. It looks like these are character cards, so you can go and just dive in right away and start playing this, which I really, really love because, you know, when I was younger, I was able to hang out and play a whole bunch of RPG games and spend a bunch of time on character sheets and everything. And now I don't have time to do that as much anymore. So having just this standard set or a standard array of things that I can just use and throw into a game and go, hey, guys, we're going to do this like one shot RPG style game. And we're just going to be able to play from there makes things so easy for me. And I love that. OK, so we get a standard deck of cards with characters and stuff on them. And if you guys were lucky enough to uh, hang out with Steve Jackson at some conventions. He actually taught this to a whole bunch of people. And I sadly missed out on all that because I was working. It sucks to be working sometimes. <laughs> so Death Test and the Death Test 2 use the melee and the wizard rules. So you have to have the melee and the wizard rules on that, guys. And then you can go ahead and go through and get the other adventures for the game, okay? So we're going to take that out of the way because we just don't have as much table space here as I would like because this thing is huge, okay? Ooh, I'm really liking this. Okay. So it looks like this is a storage file, I'm I think. Let me pull this out here. Where you can kind of keep all your game materials and stuff. Yeah, the dice do kind of look ogre-ish. Your dog news, yeah, they do have that marbling, the same sort of marbling that the ogre dice do on them, but they don't have any sort of characters on them or anything. But I like this. This is super cute, guys. It's like a little portfolio thing that you can open and store all your stuff in, and it's all themed. Ooh, I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> That's cute. I love that, that they have it themed like this. Yes, in this huge base box here, in here is Death Test, and I believe I saw Death Test 2. Let me double check for you really quick, okay? So there's the Death Test 1 and Death Test 2 in that box. And like I said, if you already picked up the Melee or the Wizard, you can always go on the Kickstarter right now and get just the pieces that you want. And I believe they have some cool like Cthulhu-themed dice on there. They have these really awesome play mats with the hexes on them, which are fantastic if you're playing, okay? You can just set up and just play, throw down the cards. It makes it really nice and easy, okay? And, ooh, this is a cute little map here. Oh, there's so much stuff. This box is loaded, loaded to the gills, guys. All right. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so this map here is like a really nice paper. It's a very nice, like, uh, matte paper feel to it. 
a little bit thicker than like a regular paper, you know, but that does give you a nice little city there to start your campaign in. And like I said, I love the fact that this is basically you can make an RPG in a box with this, you know, you can set up the map, you have everything you need to start, you don't have to have a whole bunch of planning, you know, or creating a whole bunch of monsters or characters or anything like that. You just set it up and you go, guys, you know. <laughs> Needs to lend me some scissors. You know what, Keith? It's kind of a push and pull with that because I don't want to ruin anything that I'm opening up. So I try to be as gentle as possible because I don't want to ruin or scratch anything whenever I go ahead and open stuff up. So I try to stay away from using scissors and knives all the time with opening things, okay? So you have two little world maps there, a city and more of like a world map. Let's see here. We have the GM screen. Ooh, I love GM screens. Look at the art on that. Oh my goodness. Uh, I hope the colors are coming through just as well on this because I love the colors that they picked for this, guys. All right. And this GM screen is a normal, no, not even a normal. This GM screen is really nice. Okay. So the GM screen, is it has like a little bit of a glossy finish on it here, okay? And it's opened up into four panels there for you. And it has all your rules and everything that you need on there. We have hand-to-hand -hand combat, combat with bare hands, multiple figures, aimed shots. I mean, everything that you would need on this. Bonuses and pental penalties. Yeah, this is a really, really nice GM screen, guys. Uh, it's very, very thick and sturdy with this. Yeah, I know a lot of people. So Robert St. John, a lot of people were really excited about Fantasy Trip returning. And it's they did a really, really fantastic job with it. And even has a little map on there. So the other side of this, I want to show you here. What your players will be seeing as you do all the dastardly things to them in the game here. There we go. Yeah, I love the art that they picked for this. The colors just really come out on this. And then the sides of that. This is so nice. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So that's your GM screen. I'm definitely not gonna have enough room for all of this on my table. We'll layer. There we go. All right, what else do we have in the box here? We have the character record sheets here. So we have a giant sheet with a hex diagram in the back here. And this one, the hex diagram, since I don't, I have not actually played the game before, I'm not sure exactly what this hex diagram is for, but it has level one, level two, level three, level four, along with color initiation pieces here, which I'm assuming are just dungeon levels, and which this is really smart if that's the case, because they just basically color-coded a hex map. So, okay, if you want to like a level one dungeon, then here's the level one dungeon, and you can kind of figure that out as you go along. Like, that's super awesome. Hey, Nicole, no problem for being late. We appreciate everybody who's joined us today. We're just opening up the legacy edition here of Fantasy Trip. And here's the Fantasy Trip character record sheet. And this is nice because you can make your own little dungeon maps in here with the little hexes. Okay, oh, this is nice. So it's a little flip book here with your weapons table there. An equipment table on the other side over here. Oh, this makes it so nice and easy, guys. I love this. This is so fantastic. Oh, okay, this is the layer map, the Tolkienar layer map. Hopefully I pronounced that right, guys. Yeah, this is really, really nice. Okay, so as you're going through the, la the layers of the labyrinth and stuff like that, then I'm assuming that's what this thing is here, where you can go ahead and go through the different levels there. And that is super nice, oh, because designing dungeons, I know a lot of people really like designing dungeons, but for myself, it makes it super easy to come to this map and go, oh, okay, this is supposed to be here, that's supposed to be there. I don't have to worry about it. I have months worth of gameplay in this box here, okay? No problem. 
So this is more map stuff over here. Yeah, we're going to run out of serious room there, guys. Okay. So we got our character stuff. We got our room. We got our death test. We have our bases here with the melee and then wizard on there. Okay. And then, okay, there's the Tolkienar's lair there. The book for that. Oh, I haven't even gotten to, like, the full fantasy trip labyrinth book here, guys. <laughs> this box just keeps going <laughs> and going. <laughs> All right. Get. Hopefully we can get this open. And this one has a little map on the back as well, which is nice. All right. There we go. And this one here tells you exactly how to read the map and everything on this. So it's going to tell you the different levels of stairs that you can go down and slopes. So whenever you're, you have the high ground and stuff like that, this is very, very detailed, guys. We have some hidden doors and stuff like that that you have in here. So just w little notations on the map that they have that you can use to create. Oh, wow, that looks really good. I'm going to put this under here so you guys can see. So we'll get out of the green region there. There you go. So as you can see, everything's kind of noted on this map. So if you have doors and stuff that you can't get through or you have slopes here, that are happening in the dungeon, it's all right here for you. So this becomes a super, super detailed map, guys. Oh, so exciting. And then you can just go ahead and use one of these little play mats here to play with so you can get the room space on that. That's perfect. Oh, so fantastic. What else? If there's anything specific that anybody wants to see, let me know, and I'll make sure to put it in front of the camera or underneath my super close camera there for you guys, okay? So you can see everything. Everything your guys' heart desires, okay? Let's see here. Here's the paper paperback edition of In the Labyrinth here. And I know that they are selling this on Kickstarter, I believe, in a PDF version as well. I think it was The Labyrinth. I'm not for sure on that. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and look, and look, along with several other adventures that they're trying to make for this game, which I love because they're trying to add content for you guys, okay? And this is going to have all your sort of table of contents and jobs and stuff like that in it and all the things you need to succeed, breaking weapons, let's see, or destroying creations, quick character generation stuff. So this is your main book here, looks like, for the Labyrinth. That's nice. And let's see here. Let's take a look at how many pages we got here. We got 176 pages on this. It's a nice book. I really like that. Okay. And what else? Show the cards and character pads, please. Okay. We'll take a look at that. So again, here are the cards for that, because I know some of you guys kind of float in and out. These are pre-made characters here, which are really nice. And we'll put one of them under there. We'll put a different guy under there. Or how about a different girl? We'll put a different girl under there. There you go. So you're going to have all of the stats there for you. Their weapons, their armor. And I believe, I'm not sure what this is. Hopefully Jimmy can tell me what that, that portion of it is. I wish I would have gotten a chance to play this game already. I have not yet. Okay. So those are the those, and then we got the little pads here for character creation, okay? I'm going to put one of these under there. And these are very nice pads. They're easy to, to tear one of these away on that. And the detail on this, like very, very fine detail on these, on all of the character pieces, and I mean all of the art, really. The art is amazing in this. Yeah, an excellent teaching aid. Yeah, you know, with new players, I find that's the best way to go, especially with you have a lot of new people coming into the RPG scene now, and having them create characters and stuff like that when they don't know if they're going to play or not and, or if they're going to like the game, this kind of bypasses all that. And I always found that if I'm going to host an RPG with a bunch of new players in it, the absolute way to succeed is just to have things written up for them, and then they get to see 
the really big part of the game, which is playing in the game and fighting people and going through these labyrinths and stuff and getting into like the meat of the game as opposed to the creating the characters because they might not be super creative or they might not know what to expect or they might not want to be involved in that portion yet when they're just trying to figure out the game. So that kind of takes away all of that and it makes it a super easy fill for new players who are coming into the scene. I mean, that that's what I love doing. So, okay, so here's the hexes. Uh, this, this is heavy. We finally got to the bottom! Yay! <laughs> finally got to the bottom of this monster. So many things here. Forgot to put that out there. Okay, so this is going to contain all your hexes here. And I like that the, it's actually in a pretty decent sized box here where you can just actually stick this on a shelf, you know? So it, it's almost, it's like a big RPG book size almost, you know? Let's see. Because I'm wondering if you could just, eh, it's a little bit bigger. Maybe if you have like a really big shelf, you could just layer that on a shelf and it would be nice. Yeah, the box design is awesome. Super awesome. And guess what? It's thick enough to hold all this content because, you know, there's been some other co companies uh, lately that have not had very thick boxes and it's been rough to keep all that stuff in there because you don't want your box to break, you know? Uh, Steve Jackson Games always does an excellent job. If, you know, in that big, huge ogre edition that they did, they made sure that box was sturdy enough to handle that monster, okay? So it looks like we have a huge dragon in here. He's really cool looking. Ooh, the art, man. And then we have our hex tiles here. And, okay, so this one's a solid piece here going through, but you do have lots of tiny little pieces. So as you're creating those dungeons and labyrinths and terrain, you can go ahead and create kind of whatever you want with that. That's nice. And then these ones here are singles. This one's a two. These two are singles. And then those are singles there. We have a curved three here, a three panel, along with another single over here. What else? Oh, okay. And then here's like a nice four. Flip them over. Good call, Robert. Boom. We got some extra art. I'll go back through them and flip them all over for you guys, okay? So we'll go through the panels, and then I'll go back over. Let me put this box to the side because I just I only have so much space. We have another three panel here with a single, and then it looks like four singles on that, okay? So as I go through, the terrain is marked on the back with treasures and stuff. That's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. This thing is amazing. Oh, no, yours didn't. Really? I have not heard of any problems with that, your dog news. I'm sorry to hear that. Let's see here. We have those ones. Let's take a look at these. Okay, so this looks like little circles. Oh no, we got a we got a murdered player here. <laughs> we have some skeleton bones, and look at the detail on these. These are really cute, guys. Get our skeleton in here. He's not doing too hot. <laughs> Neither is this guy here. He's having a rough day. <laughs> Yep, those are, you know what, I'm not sure if those are the 1.5. Okay, so yeah, they are the 1.5 hexes on it. They're really nice. The cardboard on them is, has a glossy finish, and then it's, I don't know, it's really nice. It's not like a just piece of cardboard, like it's pretty sturdy. Like it's not going to just bend real easily or anything like that, because I th it might be like that reinforcing glossy finish on it maybe not for sure but they do feel pretty sturdy guys we have a little dungeon door there all right we got our terrain there with our knight and then like a little sewer grate there on that one we have ooh, there's a bunch of rubble on this one i love that they put this on here so then you can go ahead and play with some unique pieces and then have like corridors and stuff like that or other places with just these like that's fantastic i don't i don't know i haven't seen anything set up like just particularly like that you can always resurrect the dead guy i'm not sure about that dr glory hog <laughs> that would be fantastic if you could though 
<laughs> it looks like there's a little bit of a water on this one. Much better than the ones we made in high school in the 80s. I would say so. You know, RPGs and stuff are coming such a long way where they're making such cool stuff that it makes it so easy to set everything up. And, I mean, you, you don't have to spend hours building a dungeon. You have all your stuff right here. Ooh, I like these right here. So you have little holes here in the ground and then your little bridge over, which I love. A little open treasure box there. Something got looted. And let's take a look at the back of this dragon. We got some skulls on the back of that dragon. The dragon's super cool looking. Like, he's just a nice color and stuff. Let's get his little dragon head in there. Look at the art on him, guys. He's so pretty. I have a thing for dragons, though. So, <laughs> I'm a dragon person. Oh, absolutely. The tiles you can use for all sorts of stuff. You know, I use all sorts of different pieces of games for different things. Especially in RPG-style games. Like, you can use little pieces or miniatures or whatever you have for them for other games, you know? I like these tiles, though. These are really nice. There's your set of tiles. We have the layer and then the labyrinth here. You, you know what? I don't think you can tame them as a pet, Dr. Glory Hog. I apologize. You know, you can't tame everything you meet. That's all I'm saying. There are some wild creatures out there, okay? <laughs> You have tons of maps, so these things double as not just one map. I mean, you have how many on here? Six, so six on this one, six levels on this one, and then another six levels on this one here. So that's 12 levels worth of dungeon, y and guaranteed you're not getting through a dungeon in one whole sitting, I would imagine, you know? We got our character pads here. We have Death Test and Death Test 2 with the tokens in there for that. And then I will open up these right here, which are like the base of this. So they're going to give you a lot of the movements and stuff. And that screen, that screen is just amazing. And we'll take a look at these character mats, or these uh, play mats here as well. Because we have one that's about, this melee one that's about the size of... I would say a regular play mat, and then the other one is closer to about a three by three. I, I don't, it's not as big as a three by three. It might be two by two, uh, but it is a square mat for that one. So let's take a look at these ones here. Open them up. This is the melee, so this would be the first one that had came out before they added the wizard stuff. All right. Oh, more dice. Lovely. All right. So in the melee one, they do have your extra bag. They're going to give you your melee ru rules here with armors and shields and pole arms and rushing attacks, movement stuff. They're going to give you that. They're going to give you these lovely, lovely dice, which are also marbled, and they are a red color, like red and kind of like a goldish gray. And then this melee map here, which is actually going to be like this here, so like this play mat here, which is kind of nice because, I mean, I'm a super huge play mat fan. Like, I personally would not end up using this. I'd end up getting the play mat for it just because I like having the versatility of not having to use the paper product and having it, like, creased on me. So, like, I always end up getting the play mats and stuff. But, but, you could always shove your rules and stuff in here with some character cards and stuff and just have like a quick play with this. Like that would be fantastic, right? This is about the size that you could just take this down to like a pub or something like that or wherever you wanted to, a friend's house and show them how to play really quick, okay? So this here, you have all of your little tokens for the game on that. I'll open this up here. Yep, that is a map in the box, in the melee box. It's a, like a little black and white map. The melee map under here that I have, that I'm going to show you here in a minute, is a color map. And it actually has, you can see it has like little holes and stuff in it. And it's, it's a lot more unique looking. All right, so for these characters here. 
got all sorts of stuff. You have like little wolves and stuff, little like not waverns. They're but they're little monsters and bears and snakes. And then you're prone whenever you get knocked prone for that. Some archers on there. Those are nice pieces. Again, the art on those are super detailed. Let's get some of these under here. So you can see, even there, there you have like a hard time seeing it. If you saw this on person, it's like somebody did like a fine inking on making these characters. So it looks like those fine, like stippled inked characters. So that's nice. I'm gonna put that in the wrong way. There we go. Hopefully it all fit in there. I just put it in wrong because the dice are in there wrong. <laughs> And then we'll open up this one here as well. The Pocket Box Edition. I do not have a copy of the Pocket Box Edition, but I just saw that online. I know, right? Yeah, that, that would be really cool. Uh, and if you take a look at the Steve Jackson Games website, they have a box of him opening up the Pocket Box. I think it was maybe Philip who did that. And that was super cool because I like the fact of being able to have a little box that you can kind of take with you somewhere and it's closed, it's secure, like you're not going to have any problems with it. Like th I think that's fantastic. So here's the wizard portion here and you're going to get all of the wizard rules and everything and a little reference page for that that's going to tell you about all the different spells and stuff that they can do and the effects, saving rolls and casting, all of that there. These books are cute. The, I like the size of these. <laughs> and then you have the wizard sheet here, which is going to be a much, much bigger playmat. I'm not going to open this all the way because I'm just going to show you the other playmats because those are super cool looking, okay? And then you're going to have blue dice here. So you have the dice, the ex two extra dice here that came in the giant box are the same color as these dice that you get in the melee and then the wizard edition here, okay? And then you have the little tokens for this as well. well open up these guys. Been playing Melee with coworkers at lunch. That's a fantastic idea, right? Lunchtime games. And I love that you can play this for a lunchtime game, you know? It's not going to take that long. It's going to be easy teach for people, okay? I agree. This is a very brilliant setup. I love how they have it in here. Ooh, look at all the flames. <laughs> Those are super cute. And then you have a little dragon and stuff on there. Little walls that you have. Oh, yeah, those are lovely. And these wizard guys look super cool. Oh, look at that guy. That guy's awesome looking. I'm really enjoying the art a lot in this. Okay. So, this is your whole set here. And... Instead of doing the paper ones that come in the little boxes there, I'm going to show you the game mats underneath here, okay? The game mats are really, really nice. So we're going to move this over so you can kind of see them. All right, for the melee one here, like I said, this is a standard sort of play mat style here. And I like all the art on this because it kind of fades off here. And the thickness of this is probably, it's not like a full, like, Magic the Gathering, like, play mat. But it's something like, um, what is the, the other companies that host, like, the Magic the Gathering games? Kind of, like, about that thickness. I, I, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully some of you guys play that game. <laughs> but... So it's a little bit thinner than a large, like, thick, thick play mat, but it's still really nice, and it has a really nice finish on it. And, I mean, you can just basically, what I end up doing is I put this on a hanger in my closet so it doesn't get, like, squashed or anything, and I end up hanging these up on hangers in my closet. So then I can easily access these anytime I want. And that's right, Dr. Glory Hog, the same thickness as the inked.com play mats. Yeah. So that one is really cute. And then the bigger one that I have underneath it is for the wizard set here. And it is, it is just much bigger. I could not actually get all of this one in frame. There's that guy there. And this one, they have like the little 
like entryways here and stuff with that. And then, then you have a couple of holes in here. And I'm imagining this is probably higher ground on there with those ones there. Yeah, so these mats are super cute. And like I said, super easy if you just hang them up on a hanger in your closet and then you can just pull them out whenever you need them. It makes it nice and easy. And you know, the 1.5 hexes that you can use with all sorts of games, guys. So right now, all of this is on Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, hanging them in the closet is the way to go, guys, because you can just put them on one of those hangers. Everybody has hangers. And then if you have a million play mats like I have at home, <laughs> Uh, you could just go in there and go, all right, what am I going to be using today? <laughs> so all of this is on Kickstarter right now. If you have the Melee Edition and you don't have the Melee Mat, you can just go and get the Melee Mat right now, which is really nice. Or if you want like the Melee and the Wizard Edition and only the mats, you can get that. Right now, they're running the Kickstarter off of Warehouse 23. So if you go on a Kickstarter right now and you type in the search warehouse 23 it's going to come up right away it's going to be the one you ha guys have four days left for the funding on it and you can get little pieces of this game so if there's just something that you want in particular you can get it or or if you enjoyed all of the stuff that i opened up today like all of the stuff there's so much stuff i opened up today <laughs> they have the legacy edition box on there guys for $120, okay? So you can get all of this, which I'm super jealous. Like, this is a nice, nice setup, guys, okay? Like, all of the cards and stuff, they make it super easy just to pick it up and go and play somewhere, you know? For me, convenience is the key. Convenience is the key. And convenience is the key for new players, too. <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to get somebody into into RP an RPG style game, convenience is where it's at. You don't want to make it too hard for them. This is one of the cards that comes with this deck right here, which is going to give you your gold and silver table rolls here, as well as some other treasure stuff on the back here, coppers and stuff, which is nice. And then I want to take another quick look at this GM screen because there was so much stuff on that GM screen and I really, really liked the art on this. Hopefully I caught everything that everybody wanted to see today. Yeah, Jimmy says it's also linked on the homepage of the Fantasy Trip game or the Fantasy Trip dot game as well if you want to see it there, okay? And if you guys want to see anything else, let me know before I end the stream, okay? Because if you missed out on something and want to take a quick look at it, I'll put it under there for you, okay? And this is going to be all of your options here with your attacks. And we got our little map here. Nothing happens simultaneously. And it's going to give you how the combat and roll goes and everything with initiative and everything on this side over here. Okay, it's going to give you a little legend for what's happening on the map there. This here is options on all that stuff there. I wish I could do this one here in more detail. There's just it's just a lot of information on the GM screen, you know? Like you usually you get a decent amount of tables on the GM screen, but I really feel like they incorporated everything here that you needed for this. Like I hate having to go through the rules of something whenever I'm in the middle of it and go, oh, gosh, what did I miss? Or, all right, we need to look up how to poison somebody. How is this on here? How is this not on here? And having everything on there is super nice. The death test box. Yeah, we can take a quick look at the death test box. Where did my death? Here we go. We'll take a quick look at the death test box for you, Jared. So this has death test and death test 2 in it. Okay, so it's going to be the box here. The first book here is going to be the Death Test Adventure here, okay? So it's going to give you information about the dungeon and where people are going and stuff. It's basically like a little walkthrough of the game and what's going to come up with everything, in case anybody doesn't know. And then you have another book here for Death Test 2 as well. 
and the death test 2 book is a little bit bigger and keep in mind guys the kickstarter is funding so they can create more adventures for this okay so if you like the game or you're interested in the game go over buy some content from the kickstarter and then make sure that you guys have more adventures to play with later on you know because if they can release some more of these little adventures here and more maps and stuff like that that would be amazing right and then here's the figures for the death test okay and we have a lot of like cute little dragony or little wavering monsters here nope they're dragons so 